at one point, and I, I, did yeah, I, see, I did see that hand. I just, you say amateur politicians, you want politicians like Massachusetts, where it's a, it's a lifeline, long job, and they're there. I mean, I don't think that they're more uh, concerned about their citizens in their state or more concerned about the state than the, the representative of Massachusetts. And I think other states are just as bad. And the um, population of young people in New Hampshire, well, New Hampshire population increased, right? 6.8%. And the population of under 18 is 22%. Is the population of over 65 is about, it's always nice to have an iPhone. Because <laughs> <laughs> you can always check. <laughs> about 12%. So, you know, I see it differently than, than what you're saying. Is I see a, a vibrant young community in, in, uh, in Hampton, a lot of young children. I know my own son moved from the West Coast to New Hampshire because he could not afford to live out on the West Coast. Um, I was talking to a woman the other day whose husband works in Massachusetts and they they live up in uh, New Hampshire and they he makes a long commute because they love New Hampshire and they think it's a, got a lot going for it. So I'm just going to disagree on those points. I found those to be a little... On, on my way here I saw the, the headline of the paper is the average age of, of the New Hampshire uh, uh, citizen now is over 40 or it's 40. Uh, and we're the fourth, uh, we have the fourth oldest population. And we are the fourth oldest population in the country. Uh, and uh, so we are trending in that direction. Uh, um, I don't know if anyone wants to respond to, to, uh, to I mean, this, this question of legislators uh, uh, as professionals versus legislators as, and, and you already put your opinion, and so I'm going to let okay. a couple of you uh, um, <laughs> jump in, and then I'll come to you at the, at the end. I have a thought about how to make Concord work better, and, and maybe there's merit in shrinking the house, but, but to me, what, what strikes me as, as someone who's testified and done some consulting in Concord is how there's almost no staff available to the members of the legislature to analyze bills and figure out whether they're going to work or not. My impression is that the, the senators and reps, what, informa what source of information do they have? We've got the legislative budget assistant, right? But that's just a couple people. In other states, legislators have a staff who do research and show them options and, and figure out impacts. They're flying, you know, in a fog in Concord, and the main source of information, my impression is, is from lobbyists. Do you want your legislators being informed by lobbyists? I'd rather that they have professional staff who can figure things out for them. But that would take money, and we don't have money. Two quick thoughts on the structure of government, because I realize we're here to talk about taxes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so much fun to talk about government. <laughs> and the, the pay of our state legislators was written in the Constitution in the late 1800s as $100 a year. And at the time, that was a pretty good amount of money, and they only met, I think, for six weeks a year. Uh, but it's been in the Constitution, and so we can't change it unless we go through that whole constitutional amendment process. Uh, I have read, and I haven't researched it in detail, that in a state, I think it's Florida, they've written in their Constitution that the legislature, legislators will be paid a percentage of the median income in the state. So they can't vote themselves pay increases. It just it, it goes with the statistics. And, and the idea is that they should get paid something. Uh, for their work. And we have the in Congress situation where people work for $100 a year in Concord, whereas if they're, I don't know, selectmen in Hampton, they may make $1,000 or $2,000 a year as a selectman. Uh, it means that we have a legislature of people who are there primarily because they don't need to make a living. They are either retired, or they're homemakers, or they're rich. And it means it is not as representative of New Hampshire as it should be. The other problem, which um, Professor Nyman touched on, is we've got this wacky system where we have these districts with multiple seats. And in my opinion, we need single member districts in New Hampshire uh, so that you can have 3,500 people represented by one person and you know who your rep is. And it's much easier for that person to campaign because they've got a smaller district to cover. And maybe if we were to pay our legislators 
let me pick a number. Let's say it's $11,000 a year because that's one quarter of the median income or something. Uh, then maybe we cut the house in half and we have single member districts, so it's 6,000 people per rep and they get paid something for <coughs> that they're working part time for six months of the year and then a little bit of the time the other six months of the year. I'm just going to piggyback on that with a fact that uh, in, in 2001 I was the grunt for the reapportionment committee in the state of Vermont. Uh, and um, in, in Vermont, if you live in Burlington, Vermont, you can, uh, which has Vermont has the largest single uh, multi-member uh, Senate districts in the country. Uh, and uh, um, if you live in Burlington, Vermont, you can vote for six of your 30 senators. Uh, and uh, so you basically, as a voter there, have control over 20% of the Senate. Uh, whereas if you live in some other community, uh, you may only get uh, to vote for one. Uh, and so that's sort of uh, writ large at the Senate level uh, in Vermont. Uh, what's going on here in the, uh, New Hampshire House, as you described it? I think it's a vivid image. Uh, uh, did you want to? Uh, yeah, I want to bring it back to Texas. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Yeah, um, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be like Massachusetts. <clears throat> so do I want a uh, state government filled with legislators like Massachusetts? No. Do I want a tax system like Massachusetts? No. But my point is that it's not clear to me that things are working all that well here in New Hampshire. Does that mean then that we adopt you know, our neighbor's way of doing things? I don't think so, because I don't think it's working very well there either. And I think the purpose of tonight and meetings like this is to, is to start to think about, well, are there other alternatives? so that we don't dig our heels in and say, well, everything else stinks, so let's just keep what we have. You know, so my point is what we have isn't that great either, so can we move things in a, in a way that we can make things a little bit better without adopting all the bad stuff that we see around us all the time? Because I, I don't want that either. As, as academics and economists and uh, <laughs> um, uh, one of the things that struck me about his comment was that his son moved back here from California or the West Coast or whatever, probably California. Uh, uh, and uh, um, that's an anecdote. Uh, um, and, and it's very easy for us to sort of have our own stories and build up our own mythologies and, and, and anecdotes uh, that, that, um, that seem to us to be convincing. Um, do you think that that has become sort of this New Hampshire advantage? Uh, um, I mean, this is a, definitely a, a weighted question, but uh, are we are we sort of building up these stories uh, to promote and continue the current system? Uh, Without uh, a doubt, I mean, the New Hampshire advantage story is told over and over again, and it's told with that aggregate statistic that New Hampshire has the second lowest tax burden in the nation. Therefore, everything is fine in New Hampshire. But it's only second lowest on average. And it's because it's the absolute lowest for the, the very rich. And it's the, the highest for many retirees. Uh, but you put it into an average and it comes out second lowest and, and you don't even pay any attention to the people who are getting killed by the system we have. Uh, but that myth goes on, it keeps on getting reinforced, particularly by the union leader. Uh, but it doesn't mean it's true for everybody. It's obviously not true for everybody in New Hampshire that there's an advantage. There's a distinct disadvantage for many people in New Hampshire and for many towns in New Hampshire. 